Hello and welcome to Professor Dixon's Summer Count 2 online class, D2L. First thing, I want to give you a heads up. I need to talk about expectations. I took all this stuff out of the stuff out of the syllabus about keeping our hands to ourselves and, and not sexually harassing anybody, including the teacher, and a lot of stuff that we don't have to, bodily fluid stuff that we don't have to talk about because we're not in the same room. We do need to probably look, worry about netiquette, so I'm going to teach you how to use the Google. If you're in Chrome, you can just type into the, the thing up here. And I net IQ guidelines, yeah, and it'll give you tons of them. I looked a couple of them up. Identify yourself. I already told you that somewhere else, didn't I? Use a signature. I like this one. In sending an email or using a discussion thread, include a subject line, the post title. Be as descriptive as you can, as succinct as you can something useful. I get so frustrated with my face-to-face -face classes because I ask a question in the discussion thread and so they hit reply and it's just this reply to question I wrote. There's no useful information in the subject line. What a waste of an opportunity to communicate. And you know, composition is about communicating with the word. I wish this wouldn't keep popping up. Avoid sarcasm because, well, yeah, do as I say, not as I do. It, it's real easy to get misunderstood online. Copy with caution. That's email. No spam. I take that seriously. I have a strange relationship with email, and I resent it when people send me email that I don't need, you know? And send me a chain letter and I'll hunt you down. Don't doubt it. Be concise. Get to the point. Go to our discussion thread on appropriate language about the coarse rude language because I need to know what you think about what is coarse and rude. In face-to-face -face classes, I will drop in a, a, a vulgar, term, rude term once in a while. But I'm real careful about using inclusive language, and I don't use, I don't label people. I don't, and I've got a real diverse family, so I don't. You don't want to make any comments about any race because there's a really good chance that I've got a brother, sister, uncle, son, daughter father who is one of those races or protected groups so just be real careful with that it's really easy to get into a flame war my gosh I've gotten into one with my sister once through email um, so be kind um, and emoticons there's some more respect online next up check out the D2L this is your landing page it should look something like this if you've checked it already you saw this welcome now let's get started thing here and notice that if you want to read everything at the bottom, you need to slide to the right to see all that stuff that I'm told I have to tell you that you should already know. How many weeks in an eight-week course? Eight weeks. Surprise, surprise. Avoid sarcasm, I told you. I have failed. But this information, now I've shared it with you. I just put this up here, Q&A, in the course documents. I probably mentioned it before, so I won't go to And you can read it on your own web page. Cute instructional video. I'm not going to play it now because, well, that would be redundant, wouldn't it? I'd want to draw attention to these student video tutorials, so please watch them. The navigation, how to use D2L, about the course content, binder. Course content in D2L actually means lesson plans, really lessons. Discussions, which do not work very well, but I use them. I won't use them as much as I did in the past because some things are not as intuitive and user-friendly as they ought to be. Um, but check these out. I do. All right, you've got like five discussions due or more. I don't know how many in the first week. Check that out the discussion thing um, and learn these so that when before you ask me a question through email go to the course documents find the Q&A FAQ ask the question there and then you can wait 16 hours and then email me that way you might get a response from a student that's better than mine and more timely and I really don't like it when people email me questions that they haven't posted in that discussion thread first because emails between me and one other person Whereas the Q and A is between the entire, is, is in front of the whole class. I don't want to have lessons that I teach each and every person, each and individually. To tell, let's go into the class content. You click on content. That's where stuff is. You should say lesson plans if you ask me. In the first week, you need to get through getting started this module and the intro and orientation module. Table of contents is what you see here. Course documents has some stuff that. It, they're not homework assignments, but they sometimes, like in the reading journal example, and the description of what a reading journal is, it tells you how to do some of the assignments. I've got links to Google Docs and the Creative Suite and how to do stuff. 
And there is the questions about lessons and FAQ. I should write Q&A in there. I'll, I'll edit that later. But there I say what I just said earlier, so I'm not going to read it again. Get to look at the course documents. Read that. Go through getting started. There are several discussion threads. There's a video which you probably had emailed to you yesterday. Everyone has to answer discussion threads. You have to post, and hopefully you'll get started interacting with each other. There's a reason for all of these questions. None of them are stupid. Well, they are you before they're stupid, but I have a purpose for them, and there's something you might learn, learn from it. But go in there. Interact with each other. The answers to the, the, the statements you make here are irrelevant. Start a new thread. Oh, hey, I like this. People are using, making pretty good discussion thread titles. That's awesome. All right, let's go back to getting started. Two discussion threads there. Intro and orientation has got the big stuff. Mostly there's a survey. There's no wrong answer for the survey. If you do it, you get the points. It's due by June 4th, which will be the 25th anniversary of Tiananmen Square, which puts me in a weird mood. Uh, I lived in China, one of the Chinas, for about five or six years. And that's kind of one of my my pet research interests. I will tell you more about myself and my uh, personal entry, personality or another video, but not today. There is a literacy reflection assignment description. That's your 500 plus word minimum. Minimum, which means the least possible you can do. People have trouble with the word minimum or what it might mean in my other classes, so I just want to make sure you look that word up. I have done everything I ask you to do, so that's a thing with me, and I think that's why I went overseas for the better part of the decade, because I taught ESL for a while, and I had trouble telling people how to learn language in the country they didn't speak the language, so I did it. There is a student literacy reflection. Guy was born into a deaf house. Mom and dad didn't, could not hear. They all sign language. He was hearing. Interesting literacy reflection. Yours is going to be whatever you want. Now, there's a description of the old literacy with word count wrong that gives you some feedback. Oh, and make sure, I think I had this up here, I, I, I didn't scroll down. That's the rubric right there. That's how I'll grade it. That's the percent. It's not worth 100 points. I'm not sure what the points are. I gotta, I'll show you that later. That's where we can find out how I'm going to grade your literacy reflection. There's a Dropbox already up. It's due by June 8th, which is like... Sunday night, I'm guessing, 10.30. It tells you the time, isn't that wonderful? The students write paper. I'm going to start talking about that next week, but don't wait till next week to do the reading, all right? Plan your attack for this semester. And I got lots of stuff here. Now, a lot of the stuff, we can start looking. There's a link to the Fish article. We're going to do a reading log on that. Reading logs where you divide the paper in half. You're going to use Google Docs. There's a link to it. Here, see there. Open new tab. I'll show you to do that later. But get your reading done. You're going to copy this. You're going to make a copy and save it to your own Google Docs account, which you have and I hope you use. If you don't know how to use Google Docs, then uh, learn because it's awesome. And I've already sent you this link. This is a page that it's kind of like a wiki in a way almost. I have lots of links to stuff. I you can, there's, I post stuff on YouTube quite a bit. This is the blog where I'm putting lesson plans, and I'm going to put a, this capture. I'm going to embed this into that blog, um, and I'll put lesson plans there. I got seven things you got to do this week. If, if things weren't clear from D2L, because I expect people to uh, excuses are well, everybody's got one, and they all stink. So I produce things in many different ways. It's redundant to have it in Google Docs and also D2L, but if someone says, I don't understand D2L, then you should understand Google Docs. And if you don't understand either one, I'm curious why you're taking an online class. But we can get through it. Make sure you read this. Download the MLA handbook from Norton. I have it here. This is like a book they gave you free that tells you how to do it. the most important thing, and I'll come back and harp on this again. The most useful thing, I really think, really, is when you turn in your final your paper for the literacy reflection. The heading is your name, my name, class name, date. On the left, no extra hard returns, no extra spaces, all just double spaced, but must be double spaced. Everything gets a title. Don't turn in a paper without a title. Your last name in the top right hand corner, followed by the page number, and you can insert that page number automatically. 
don't like type it in and enter it on every page. That's ridiculous. Ask somebody how to do it. Don't be afraid to go to the writing center. They're awesome. They're wonderful. I will want on the literacy reflection. You don't have to have much for quotes. I don't care, but I do want to work cited with one citation, at least. But I want the citation of a book. The book that meant something to you. It could be the book you hated most, that they tortured you by making you read, or it could be the book that you loved. Let me know. The next thing I want to mention: Google Docs. Yes, blogs. I have a Comp2 Summer blog where I'm doing a lesson plan a day, basically. Um, this is the first one I wrote, and every time I put a new one, it'll show up on top. So you might want to start at the bottom and read backwards, I don't care. This is my day one welcome. So the next one which pops up will be, have something, some text in it, and it'll embed the video for what I'm doing right now, hopefully. But I have three different blogs. One that is my, when I started blogging before it was officially encouraged or allowed by the faculty by the by the by the school and then they got on board and oh blogging is great everyone should have one so they encouraged us to do it and I opened another blog so this is my old blog which I show links to with you several times it's at dixoncomp.blogspot.com these little tags or labels are awesome so if you go down here and you click on comp 2 you get everything I posted that I thought was important for comp 2 students to know or when I complain about things like word count and length requirements. I have some great, I share personal information. I also share um, I have some rants when people do things I don't understand. I explain why. If I say 500 words and it's 499, you get a D because it's easier and you didn't follow directions. And minimum means the least you could possibly do. So if you do minimum, you should expect anything but the least grade that you could possibly earn. That's just logic for you. But scroll down. There's some places there's even cartoons and stuff in school. By the way, if I had a four was in my tractor, I'd have those on my, my wheels. But check that out. Also, I have the one that's now encouraged by the faculty. I have, and, and this also has tags and labels. You can check by dates, but mm, the categories actually is what I use here. And you can click Comp 2, and you can click the students' rights to their own language paper. Oh, that's actually on the old one. It's got the S-T-R-T-O-L. I share that link with you, but you can also find it here in the tags and labels at S-R-T-O-L. So check out my blogs, but these are just resources that read them. It's pretty quick reading. But the lesson plans, what I do this semester, are going to be on the Sticks in English 122 Blogspot Summer Comp 2 blog. I already mentioned protocols and etiquette, and this video is probably longer than I really will ever have videos in the future.